So jumping back to snark underscore rig dot max, I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna hide the geometry. You notice that we cleaned I cleaned up a little bit in here. Um, so with nothing selected, I'm gonna replace that work in progress layer and I cleaned this up just in case someone wanted to come in and animate on this um, and then they're not looking around at all these work in progress layers and things that just aren't used so with that done we need to go in and create a custom spline IK system and to do that we're gonna start off just exactly the same so just turning on my snaps toggle right click make sure that pivot selected I'm gonna come in here go to shapes go to line Make sure that I've got smooth and smooth on the initial type and drag type. And just create a vertex for each one of the spine joints. Alright. With that done, I'm going to have to affect the, uh, the pivot of this line that we've just created just so it lines up with this first spine joint. So if we come across to the hierarchy tab, go to affect pivot only and make sure that we grab the top align tool and just align it to the, the first bone. Uh, we want that pivot point and pivot point with X, Y, and Z on position and X, Y, and Z on orientation. Just go ahead and OK that. And with that done, I should be able to rotate from this point in local and it should follow along just the same as the spine joints, which is great. And with that done, we can actually add the wave modifier to this right now. So let's go in here, grab the modifier list, scroll all the way down the bottom. And remember, um, mine's off screen for you guys, but three up from the bottom for me is the wave modifier. So if you guys go ahead and click that. And that's added now, that's great. Let's have a look at what we've got. All right, cool. So we've got some form of wave modifier already on this, which is fine. If we just animate the phase, you can see how that's running through and that looks pretty good. Uh, we do, however, need this to be rotated the other way. So instead of it going up and down like this, we need it to go side to side. So all I'm going to do is turn on my snaps uh, for rotation. And I'm just going to rotate this around 90 degrees. So it still lines up. And then when we come and change the amplitude this time, it's side to side, which is perfect. And just animate the phase. That looks really cool. All right, so let's leave that as it is for now. We're going to have to add those point helpers in that we had on the last spline IK system. So because this is custom, we're going to do it on our own rather than relying on the spline IK solver from the animation menu. So let's come to the create tab, cross the helpers, and create a point. Just place that in the scene. Uh, so set your, your size to 0 0.075 if you're following along with this and I'm just going to leave that as a box. I'm going to leave it bright green so I can tell the difference between these point helpers and the main root locator that we have. And I'm going to do a path constraint on this point just uh, along the line that we've created. So let's come up to animation, constraints, and path constraint, and just grab the line. So with that done, you'll notice that we've got some animation on here on our timeline if we scrub through you'll see the point go from 0 to 100 and that's because if we scroll down in the motion tab all the way to the bottom you can see that we've got the percentage along path is animated and you know what we don't actually want to do that um, I just clicked the C button by mistake there so don't worry about that if you saw that um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just with that point selected I'm just gonna delete the first and last key and then when we scrub the timeline, there's going to be no animation, which is fine. And in these options, I'm just going to turn on follow as well. So with that done, we want a point locator for each one of these joints, or bones, whatever you want to call them. So I'm going to hold down shift and click and drag. And I need four of them. So let's change the number of copies to four. And they're copies, not instances or anything like that. And OK, so this guy needs to be at 100%. The next one down is 75, one after that is 50, and obviously the end one will be 25. So let's just get this, 50% and 25%. So the main difference between these locators and the spline IK system that we had before is the locators on the spline IK system actually control the line that runs through the, uh, through the center of the spine. 
these ones don't do that it's the other way around so the line actually if we dr jump in here just drop down to the line come to vertex the this line's actually controlling these points which is great it means that we can attach the bones to the points and the points are then controlled by the the line which has got a wave modifier on it so if we turn the wave back on you can see that these points are coming along with the wave so that's how we're going to control the bones with this wave modifier so with all that said and done let's just actually do it really quickly so I'm just going to grab this bone I'm going to come up to animation constraint and position constraint and I'm just going to grab it's this upper point and I'm going to just jump down the hierarchy to this guy and do the same thing so animation constraints position and this is one of these uh, monotonous tasks that in rigging you know you if you're doing this a lot or even if you're not uh, just for the next time you could easily script this up this would be pretty simple but for the sake of this demo let's just keep going so animation constraint position constraint alright excellent if we then go ahead let's not turn the wave on to really mess things up but let's go back down to the line let's grab the vertex and move a vertex you can see that the bones are coming along but they're not pointing down the axis to the next bone in line and we really need to get that going so um, let's have a look at getting that to work so with this bone selected I'm just gonna go animation constraint and I'm gonna use a look at constraint on the point furthest down from it you can see that line has appeared now so if I move a vertex on the line again with this guy you can see it's now pointing down the axis and you'll notice another cool thing as well that first joint is scaling or it appears to be scaling but there's because we're using position constraints and look at rather than using scale uh, means this can actually go through to a game engine that doesn't support scaling and you know what you've got a sort of squash and stretchy character for free um, so pretty simple to set up and it, you know it wasn't really difficult but we've got squash and stretch uh, and what's going to be a really cool swim system as well. So let's get this next joint animation constraints and look at again. And you know, once again, if you were scripting this up, way easier than doing this, but let's just keep going. So we're using another look at and another look at for this guy. Constraint look at. And this bottom joint doesn't need to look at anything, which is perfect, so we don't have to worry about it. So with that done. Let's turn on our wave and have a look what's happening. Yep, there you go. So you can see the rest of the character coming along. If we start animating the phase, things are moving, which is great. You'll notice one thing that does happen, though, is that this joint, this bone here, the top of the spine, moves away from the head bone. So that could cause a problem for us, but for this character, it's I don't think it's going to, to be honest. Um, I think that's a bit of motion here is going to be fine. I'm not worried too much. You could continue this this line in the the spline system, the custom spline system, all the way up to the head if you wanted to. But let's turn on our geometry and let's take a look at what we have already. So let's turn on the amplitude. And I tell you what, let's let's animate this face so I don't have to keep scrubbing through and I can just play it. So let's just turn on auto key. And let's put the phase up to five. It's cool. And we'll probably have that ease in and ease out that we had before as well, which we do. So let's get rid of that. So really quick, come up to the curve editor. And let's find this guy. All right, modified object. We've got the wave. And that's what we want. So let's change that to straight tangents. And I can play through now. All right, so there's a little bit too much motion around here for like definitely it looks crazy. Um, so let's push that. Let's change this wavelength to 0 0.05. Let's have a look at what's happening there. Okay, so we, you know, changing that is give us more, more of a um, yeah. Just made the wavelength really short and not really great looking. Not for this character, he would m have to be much longer. So. We had this at 5 before, I think, or 0.5. So actually, that looks good at 5. It looks pretty nice. 
So let's up the amplitude, and we'll do the same on this one as well. So, 002, let's have a look. Nope. So I'm really eyeballing this, I'm not really worrying about it too much. Let's bring this wavelength down so we get a nice little kink. Alright, so 1.5. Let's play that. Alright, that's looking pretty nice. Let's uh, change this amplitude to uh, 0 0.001. Whoa! So just change that to 0.1 and you can see I have totally broken this, but don't worry about it. Let's have another play around and see what we can get. Let's look from the top view just so we can see. Alright, it's way too much. Actually, I think that's probably the best I can get with this without really spending a lot of time trying to play with it. And obviously, um, the best way to do that is just spend some time and really get that to work for you. But right now we've got an automated uh, shark swimming or a fish swimming or anything like that. Um, so let's leave that video um, and see what else we can do with it in the next one.